Um, thank you. As you well know, not a simple question. Um, forget the failure, and here's why we are here now. I guess I'd have to say at least I give them credit for finally having a plan that's only taken eight years, even if it's not a very good plan. I sincerely believe that at this point in time, we need to wait for the next governor to say, here's what I'm going to do, to, to pull folks together and say, here's the cost-effective best practices, best outcomes that we can provide. There are several things that were in the budget last year and we're trying to put in this year that would help relieve the current pressure on the state hospital. We see for some reason, and I think it has to do a lot with the stress and strain in society right now, there's an increase at the state hospital. It's way over its capacity. I believe that the hospitals in Vermont have not stepped up to the plate to help deliver the services that we need. And I think as governor, I would sit them down first of all and say, excuse me, you have a fundamental commitment to help resolve this problem. How are you going to do that? So I think that's the first thing that needs to happen. Um, I, I'd, I'd love to say, whoopee, I have the perfect answer, and I am the first to admit that I do not. But I sincerely believe that a group of 15 people could sit down and come up with a plan that is affordable, that we could develop in several years. So the state hospital issue has been one that I have faced from the time that I was in the state Senate. When we were first, when it was first brought to our attention, by state employees who worried for their jobs if they were to bring forward the truth of what was happening in the state hospital. We expedited funding. We did something that I have never done before, which is to say, spend this money. You don't have to go out to bid. Get it done. It's about safety and it's about dignity. And they didn't spend it. And they didn't do it. And then we heard about plans that were coming up that would have been partnerships, I think pretty powerful ones. And suddenly they went away. And the word that I got was, oh, it was about politics of which hospital you might be partnering with. That is unacceptable when you have the kind of money going out of the state and you have the kind of uh, the ongoing decertification and the concerns for the individuals who work in the state hospital and who are being served by the state hospital. What I believe we need to do is to take a look at all of the options on the table. I live in the Upper Valley. I live in, in Parkland. And I have to say that having uh, learned about the state hospital equivalent in New Hampshire. I am embarrassed by what we have in the state of Vermont. They long ago made it a priority. They did partnerships with the teaching hospital to be able to make that institution stronger and better and cutting edge. And it is actually a model for the rest of the country. Not very far away, and in a rare moment, we have not met that standard or come even close. I would look for opportunities to be able to partner, whether it's with the uh, hospitals in different parts of the state or with a teaching hospital institution to bring additional resources and capacity that wouldn't be there otherwise or if the best plan is to rebuild on the location where we are now that is what I will pursue but it will happen in the first year and it will be done using state employees for the right, best day way to deliver those services. Secretary of State. The problems we're having with the state hospital right now is a real example of failure of leadership in Montpelier. It, this is, it's been, I've been Secretary of State for 12 years, and for 12 years this has been an issue. What are we going to do with the state hospital? And there hasn't been a real commitment to get the job done these past eight years. Despite the fact, do you know we've lost $40 million in federal funds? because of the decertification. That's real money. That makes a real difference in terms of our capacity to deliver services to, to those of you here in this room um, and people outside who we care about. It, it's unacceptable to me. And as governor, I'm committed to getting the job done, having a plan in place that we can implement in the first year. Um, you know, I, I have some questions about what's on the table right now. And uh, like 
like Susan, like Matt, I wouldn't just go uh, along with it. I think there are certain people who need the kinds of services that you would provide with the expertise you have and the security you have at a state facility of some sort. Um, I am attracted by the idea of having a regional approach and engaging a regional hospital, if that can be effective and cost effective, but also effective in terms of delivering the services. One of the things that I'm going to do when I'm governor is I'm going to put in place an office of planning and partnership. Howard Dean used to have a planning office and it, it, it disappeared during the Douglas administration. We need a plan. This failure of leadership is a failure of planning. It's not like it was a surprise that we've got a problem here. So we're going to get back to planning when I'm governor. But I also know the answers are not found in Montpelier. A lot of smart people here are thinking, but the answers are in our communities. It's the people delivering the services. It's the families. And I will bring folks to the table, this Office of Planning and Partnership, specifically focused on the state hospital to get this job done. Connie, I think you know better than, than most that uh, that hospital should have been shut down long ago. It's not where uh, any of us want our family members to be treated if that's where they need to be. Um, Susan said that, uh, I mean, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for the next governor um, to say, here's what I'm going to do. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is say that I'm going to sit down with the community hospitals and give it one last try because I think a community-based system is a better way to go. If that proves to be impossible uh, in a very short period of time, we'll go to plan B, which is to rebuild the state hospital, and I would do it uh, in Waterbury because that's where the workforce is, that's where the trained workers are. Uh, it's a central location. Honey, you asked about using uh, Medicaid money uh, that the administration recommended. I would not do that. I would pursue this the way we pursue other capital uh, construction costs is that we borrow uh, for it. I've talked with the state treasurer. He believes we can do that uh, and maintain our, our current bond rating in the state. So that's the right way for us to pay for a structure that's going to last uh, for years and years, and that's the way uh, I, would, I would pursue it. Let me just say that this administration, I think, is the Douglas administration has kicked the can down the road on this one. Um, because if they had come up with a solution, they would have actually had to go to the voters and say, here's how we're going to pay for it, okay? Because let's be honest, these things cost money, and we have to be willing to do more than promise you solutions. We have to be willing to say, well, we will pay for it, and here's how we're going to pay for it. And when this administration came forward with this latest proposal, they went from a 45-bed plan to a 60-bed plan, and that's because of increased pressures, as have been noted. Where are those increased pressures coming from? A lot of it is from the underfunding of our outpatient services in our community system. More people in the hospitals, more people in the state, uh, in the state hospitals. A million dollars of debt, which constructed a over $400,000 a year to have somebody there. They just raised the operating Back to politics uh, four years ago. Uh, I mean, I was elected president of the Senate when I got back. And the plan was to build an hospital up, at, up here at the county, remember, a pledge around. So I called up Melinda Lind Estes and uh, Teresa De Palma, a friend of mine, and said, are you ready to build this hospital? They said, are you kidding me? So the state's barely talked to us about building a hospital. I said, well, it's the governor's plan to build a hospital up here. So what, what did we do? The speaker signed 1809 at the time. We appointed a three-member commission to go out and look at the issue. And uh, come back to us for a recommendation. That was four years ago. They came back with a great plan. They said, you have a short period of time, 12 months, to work with the very designated providers, hospitals that want in on this idea, to provide community-based care. And if you can't do that after 12 months, we need to build a facility probably in Waterbury. That was the Symington Shumlin Commission that came back. Well, I, as governor, I'm going to implement that plan. It is a disgrace that we have uh, your child or any other Vermont, our most vulnerable population, living in a state hospital that's been condemned by the federal government that's cost us $63 million that we could have used for community-based care. This administration has treated this like so many other issues on the agenda. While they were out cutting ribbons, they left the job to be done for the next government. So here's the plan. We'll explore the options. We'll talk to Ruffin. We'll talk to Garvin Hitchcock. We'll talk to Bradley Retrieve. 
you talk to the folks up at Fletcher, say, are you serious? You've got 12 months of work with your collaboratively based community-based system. If you can't, we break ground in Waterbury after 12 months of the Trump administration and build a state-of-the-art hospital with great community care provided by our state workers. Okay, next question.